On this week's episode of Canadian Football League Weekly, Adam and I traveled to Toronto and saw the Argonauts take on the Edmonton Elks. It was our first game at BMO Field, and boy, did we have a good time. Welcome to Canadian Football League Weekly, presented by the World of Football. Each week, we recap the games played north of the border, and we look ahead to next week's games. I'm Randy Snow, and I'm joined by my son, Adam. Yep, that's right, everybody. We want to thank you for joining us. We are currently sitting at 978 subscribers on our YouTube channel, so if you have yet to subscribe to the channel, please feel free to do that. Hit the like button and all that stuff. It helps the channel out. And we're getting ever so close to our goal of 1,000 subscribers. Also on this channel, you can find our weekly podcast, This Week in the World of Football, featuring the two of us. And you can also find my weekly show, Arena Football Weekly, which drops usually every Wednesday or Thursday, depending on schedules and all that. And we're going to have another video dropping this week, as Randy kind of alluded to at the top. We're going to have a video about our trip to Toronto, seeing that Argonauts game. We're going to talk a bit, little bit about it here. and then. Uh, we'll have a whole video up about our trip and some extra stuff we did on top of that. So be sure to check that out. All right. But before we begin this week's show, I have another correction, uh, another mistake. I said in the very first show, I was talking about uh, a wide receiver from Edmonton and I called him uh, Herji Bayala. And then the next week I corrected myself. I said, no, it wasn't Herji, it's Henji. And then I got Corrected again last week by somebody up in Canada. You know who you are. <laughs> it really is Herji Mayala. So apologies for two weeks in a row. The man's name is Herji Mayala, wide receiver for the Edmonton Elks. And we saw him in person <laughs> just a few days ago. And the ago. man's name is Randy Snow, <laughs> continuous purveyor <laughs> of screw-ups. So. And it makes for, makes for good internet uh, Does it, though? Videos. Does it? <laughs> You're making a living out of making fun of my mistakes. I mean, <laughs> it's not untrue, but... <laughs> all right, let's 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 get into the week three scores up in the CFL. And it all started out on Thursday with the Montreal Alouettes defeating the Ottawa Red Blacks 47-21. to This was the home over for Montreal, and it was a battle of undefeated teams. They raised their Grey Cup banner, Montreal did, uh, before the game. And they had a sellout crowd of 23,235 in attendance, so good for them. Uh, Montreal was actually up 30 to 1 at halftime, and it, the score was 30 to 12 at the end of the third quarter. Uh, this was the 11th consecutive win for Montreal, dating back to last season. Uh, Montreal quarterback Cody Fajardo completed 28 of 35 passes for, two, for 393 yards and three touchdowns. He also ran for another touchdown. Wide receiver uh, Tyson Philpot had eight catches for 150 yards and a touchdown. Wide receiver uh, Keon Julian Grant also had eight catches for 166 yards. And wide receiver Reggie White Jr., no relation to that Reggie White, had four catches for 61 yards and two touchdowns. On defense, linebacker Tyrese Beverett, okay, yep, Beverett, had a sack. An interception to go along with 13, count them, 13 tackles for loss. Uh, David Cote converted four field goals in the game. For Ottawa, quarterback Drew Brown completed 21 of 35 passes for 292 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. Wide receiver Justin Hardy had seven catches for 143 yards. And wide receiver Devontae Dedman returned a kickoff 101 yards for a touchdown in the fourth quarter. This was this was quite a game. I mean, I I got to give kudos to the Montreal Alouettes. I mean, we've we've been kind of, you know, cautiously, you know, waiting to see if this was a team that was for real after winning that great cup. This this might be the best team in the CFL. They just might be. <laughs> they've got a they got a squad there. I thought the Red Blacks would give them more of a run for their money. Uh, I mean, the Red Blacks, you know, kind of pulled it together. Uh, probably a little too late in this game here, but I mean, kudos to those Alouettes, though. That what a what a juggernaut of a team I think they have built there. We'll see what they can do going forward. But right now, I mean, Montreal might be the best team in the CFL. 
The British Columbia Lions defeated the Winnipeg Blue Bombers 26-24. British Columbia jumped out to an early 10-0 lead and led 13-7 going into the half. Winnipeg was able to take the lead for the first time in the fourth quarter, going up 21-20. But the rest of the way, it was all field goals with the Blue Bombers hitting one, the British Columbia Lions hitting two, and with little time remaining in the game, the British Columbia Lions were able to go down the field and take a knee at the one-yard line to earn the two-point victory. British Columbia quarterback Vernon Adams Jr. completed 21 of 33 passes for 398 yards and two touchdowns. Running back William Stanbeck rushed for 83 yards, and wide receiver Alexander Hollins had seven catches for 215 yards and two touchdowns, while kicker Sean White made four field goals. For the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, it was quarterback Zach Claros who completed 23 of 30 passes for 247 yards and no touchdowns. He has not thrown a touchdown pass in three games so far this season. Backup quarterback Chris Strebler scored three touchdowns on short yardage plays. Wide receiver Nick Dembski led the Blue Bombers receivers with eight catches for 94 yards. The Blue Bombers wore a star blanket logo on their helmets in honor of National Indigenous Peoples Day. I did notice at the bottom of the screen they did something special with both teams' logos you know, on the graphic there. Uh, mm. Obviously, the Blue Bombers had that special helmet on. The Lions yeah. didn't do anything. They just had the basic BC helmet, but yep. they had the cool indigenous BC Lions logo on the the scorecard there at the bottom. So that was pretty neat. Yeah, yeah, they wore that uh, that logo last year. Winnipeg did. It, it is such a cool logo. I yep. wouldn't mind them using it more often, but they're probably going to pull it out once a year during Indigenous Peoples Day. Uh, but it's it's so cool. If you haven't seen it, go go check out the highlights or check out their. Uh, uh, Twitter feed, and you, they got a really nice picture of the helmet out there. It's just, yeah, just really, I'm really su- nice. I'm surprised that the other teams, I think the Elks have done that. I'm not sure. I think I think every team in the league has one uh, for Indigenous Peoples Day. I, I think they all had something last year. Uh, they've, mm. they've got one for just about every team, I believe. Okay, because I knew a handful of them did. Like I thought like the Argonauts might have been a team that didn't, and maybe the Red Blacks didn't, but... I'm not 100% sure. If somebody wants to let us know, let us know down in the comments. I mean, we're also here to learn. We don't live in Canada. We only visit it once every year or two. So just let us know down there. Regardless, I think it's cool. I, th- I like that alternate look. Uh, it would have been cool if the Lions would have done the same thing for this week. But, hey, beggars can't be choosers, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of going up to Canada every uh, couple of years, uh, Saturday, it was the Toronto Argonauts over the Edmonton Elks, 39-36, to and we were there for this game. Man, what a good time we had. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Uh, Toronto was up 21-15 to at halftime. Edmonton tied the score 36-36 with 3 minutes and 49 seconds left in the game. Uh, Argos kicker Lyram Hyralahu made a 37-yard field goal as time expired for the win for Toronto. Uh, it was his only field goal of the night he kept he kicked a few extra points but that was his only field goal of the night uh toronto quarterback cameron dukes completed 18 of 21 passes for 214 yards and two touchdowns he also ran for another touchdown running back kadeem carey ran for 104 yards and a touchdown while wide receiver demonte coxey had three catches for 58 yards and a touchdown for edmonton quarterback mcleod bethel thompson completed 18 of 38 passes for 342 yards and four touchdowns. Wide receiver Dylan Mitchell led the receiving core with five catches for 120 yards and a touchdown. Linebacker Nick Anderson led the defensive unit with nine tackles. And like I said, we were at this game. Gosh, the food was great. The atmosphere was great. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. I was just there for the food. I, I was really uh, excited to get some pizza pizza. Um, I wanted to get some uh, poutine, but uh, for some reason that didn't settle well with me, but I gave it to you and you finished it off. You said it was great. Uh, it was, it was yeah. I don't know what your problem was. It was it was jerk chicken poutine. And, uh, it was great. Uh, after, after the first couple of bites, I'm like, oh, this, this doesn't settle real good. So, But you liked it. I did. It was great. <laughs> no, look, food aside, you know, it was a great experience. It was pride night at the game. Like I said, we're going to have a whole video on our experience there, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, But talking about this game, it was just a good game. From start to finish, this was just an entertaining game. And uh, thanks to the folks over at CFL PR over on the X uh, or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, CFL Communications, uh, they put out this right after the game. There were 75 combined points in this game. 
No team trailed by more than seven points. It was 10 touchdowns total in this game, five by each team, 745 combined yards, and Dukes and Bethel Thompson, the two starting quarterbacks in this game, combined to go 46 of 59 for 556 yards, six touchdown passes between them, and no interceptions. It was just an entertaining, all-around great game. I was a little surprised at the end of the game when the Argos won by a field goal because if I wasn't mistaken, didn't Edmonton still have a timeout left? I thought they, I could have swore they had at least a timeout left, or maybe I'm they not didn't. Sure. I, it, it, it surprised me too because uh, I, I didn't know that the clock was still running. I thought they had stopped yeah, the clock. Same. And, same. and all of a sudden, they kicked the field goal. I look over the clock and it's all zeros. So that was a shock. I mean, yeah. happy for, for Toronto, but just I'm really surprised. Yeah, I, I was. that's what caught me off guard. I was like, I thought they had a timeout left, so I was waiting to hear a whistle or something. But I was like, they're not doing it. Oh, huh, that's weird. And then when they kicked it and I saw the, all the zeros, I was like, that's it? Like, they didn't, <laughs> game over. They didn't try to stop? <laughs> the game's over. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I was happy for the Argos. We were rooting for the Argos. I mean, Randy had his Argos hat like he was wearing at the start of the show. He had his scarf. He had his cup. Uh, we both got our mini helmets at the game, though. Uh, these are yep. these nice, nifty CFL mini helmets. Uh, this is it was really cool. Yeah, Randy got one, too. Uh, I would have gotten a custom jersey, but apparently they didn't have any ends. That's right. They ran out of the letter N, so I couldn't put a snow on the back of my jersey. So I ended up not getting one, which bummed me out. So other than that, I mean, what a great game. Heck of a tie. Yeah. Uh, probably the highlights of the week. If you get a chance to check any of these highlights out, this was probably the game of the week. And I will say it again, Edmonton is a team that while they are 0-3, and I want to talk to you about this later, while they're 0-3, they're a team you got to watch out for. They they are sneaky. They, they've they just come up on the losing end of some really close games so far this year. And, boy, I'm telling you, when the ball starts going that other way, Edmonton's going to be somebody that we're going to be talking about later on this year. I swear yeah. I can feel it. Yeah, the last thing I want to say about the game is that two years ago we tried to go to a Toronto game, got stuck in traffic, but never made it to the game. Um, really disappointing. Uh, this year, instead of driving to the stadium, we stayed at a hotel about 30 minutes away, and we took the GO train, which was a new experience for us. We we don't use public transportation here in Michigan. We we drive cars everywhere we're going. But uh, it, it was pretty easy. I ask a lot of questions when we got to the station. The lady helped me, told me, this is where you go. This is how you pay for your ticket. Get a, get a day pass. You're good for going and coming. Uh, we did that. We, train was right on time. A really nice, clean, great ride. You know, a couple of stops. And we're, they dropped us off right at the stadium. Uh, and uh, there were some people there that were going to an Arkells concert. Uh, they're the band uh, from Canada that did the song about uh, the Thai cats are humming. So I wonder if they actually played that uh, at their concert that night mm -hmm. uh you know because you're in argonauts territory you're not in tie cats territory and if they did play it did they get booed if somebody was at that concert let me know but we saw people with arkell shirts we saw people with edmonton and toronto jerseys and we just followed the football crowd to the stadium because those two venues are right next to each other uh but yeah. uh, just a really great time the the train worked great uh we we took the train back and it dropped us two blocks from our hotel so i mean it was perfect perfect I, if we ever go to again we're gonna stay at that hotel we're gonna take that train yep and we're not gonna tell you which ones that is because that's our secret now <laughs> so yeah. but no it was a nice little stadium we would never been to bmo field uh we were used to going to the rogers center the last time we saw the argonauts play it was at yeah. uh the rogers center so yeah that was pretty many nice years ago. uh many years ago so bmo field not too bad of, of a place to go check out a game so we would recommend, for those of you who have not yet been, like I said, just take that train. That's your best course of option, uh, action. Just <laughs> take that train, drops you off right there. Ex what is it, Exhibition Station? Yes. I believe is what it's called. So get off yes. there, and you're right at the game. It, it was awesome. So yep. that worked out. Yep, absolutely. And now we're going to move on to our final game of the weekend, uh, which was Sunday night, and it saw the Saskatchewan Rough Riders defeat the Hamilton Tiger Cats 36-20. to Saskatchewan led this game 18 to 7 at halftime and cruised to the easy victory. Saskatchewan quarterback Trevor Harris completed 16 of 21 passes for 117 yards and two touchdowns before suffering an injury. Um, what quarter was that that he got hurt? I, it was in the second half. I, was it in the second half? I thought it was in the first half, but I maybe it was I early in the remember. game. I forget when, but he went down with injury. When I saw that, I was like, yeah. "Oh boy, 
you hate to see that, especially for a team as good as the Riders have been. They look like they're going to be a real good team this year. So that stinks to see. Uh, he was replaced by quarterback Shea Patterson, who scored a rushing touchdown. Uh, running back A.J. Olette ran for 98 yards and also had 47 yards receiving. Wide receiver Samuel uh, Emulis? Emulis? Emulis. 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 Emulis had uh, three catches for 39 yards and a touchdown, while rookie wide receiver uh, Jow a Jow. Uh, <laughs> I, I, that's how you say I think his it's, name? I think it's a Joe a Joe. But I just a Joe it was Joe. such a cool name I had to include it. So yeah, wide receiver. Yeah, a Joe, Joe, a Joe. Joe. He had a real big catch, a, a single catch for forty yards and a touchdown. It was an awesome play for him. His first touchdown in the CFL. Uh, and then uh, for Hamilton, quarterback Bowley by Mitchell completed twenty nine passes, uh, twenty nine of forty five passes for two hundred ninety five yards, two touchdowns, but threw three interceptions during that game. A couple of them weren't his fault. I saw a couple of them bounce off the receiver's hands. Yeah. So yeah, two can't of them. Completely blame him, but man, it was, that was a uh, Tough break for Bo Levi there. Uh, wide receiver Shamar Bridges had nine catches for 113 yards and a touchdown. Linebacker Kyle Wilson led the defense with 10 tackles and a sack. Look, from the jump of this game, you could tell this was the Saskatchewan Rough Riders game to lose, especially opening yeah. kickoff where yep. Hamilton was returning and fumbled it right down the opening kickoff. And I was like, oh, boy, Hamilton's going to be in for a long night. And that yep. Rough Riders team is something awesome. And, if we ever go to another CFL game, which I'm sure we're going to go to more CFL games, and stuff, oh yeah, I want to go to Saskatchewan. That I want to go <laughs> to a Riders game real bad. Like if I wasn't an Argonauts fan, or even like I, I do have a soft spot for the Tiger Cats, I, I think I'd like the Riders. I like that Riders atmosphere. I don't know what it is. It just seems like they got one of the better home atmospheres in the entire CFL. No offense to anybody else. It's just when I see their highlights, I'm like, that place always looks like it's rocking. They're always backing that team up, and I don't know what it is. I just that's the destination I want to go to, at some point. Yeah, yeah. I I'd, I'd like to go to Winnipeg myself. Uh, they uh-huh. they have a statue of Bud Grant outside because he was a player and a coach for Winnipeg. Won Grey Cups, you know, as a player and as a coach up there before he came to Minnesota and and became a legend in the NFL. So uh, yeah, I'd I'd like to go see Winnipeg play at home. I mean, in all honesty, we want to go to every home stadium yeah, in the CFL. Of course, I mean, yeah. that'd be great. We're gonna we're gonna check off BC later this year with the Grey Cup, so that'll put us down to what? That'll be three three venues three out of in nine. the current CFL. Three out of nine, so we got six <laughs> to go. I'm down. We've been invited yep. to Montreal too to go see a Montreal game. So yeah. I don't know. I think we got to make it happen at some <laughs> point. We won't be like that guy who's out there right now trying to break the record for fastest. Oh yeah. Uh, going to all the games, you know, right, the yeah. stadium, sorry, in a week yep. or whatever, however yeah. many days. But you can't do that. Probably can't do that, but I'd be down for every year trying a different stadium. I mean, Tim Hortons Field's great. I like BMO Field. Looking forward to going to BC Place. And like I said, I want to go to Saskatchewan. I want to hit up all those places. Yep. And I think yep. that'd be a lot of fun. So, yep. Absolutely. And obviously, I'm by this week the uh, Calgary Stampeders. All right, taking a look at the standings after three weeks in the CFL. In the East Division, the Montreal Alouettes sit at 3-0, and followed by the 2-0 and Toronto Argonauts, the 1-1 and Ottawa Red Blacks, and the 0-3 Hamilton Tiger Cats. In the West Division, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders sit at the top with a 3-0 and record, followed by the 2-1 and BC Lions, the 1-1 and Calgary Stampeders, the 0-3 and Edmonton Elks, and 0-3 and Winnipeg Blue Bombers, who are now 0-3 and for the first time since 2000. And 12. And before we talk yeah. about the matchups going into next week, I do have one question I want to ask you. Who is the best 0-3 team in the CFL right now? <laughs> oh, boy. Um, there's three of them. Um, Hamilton got the and uh, Bombers, Edmonton, and, Edmonton. and the Hamilton Tiger Cats. I, Who would you put best to worst if you had to right now? I, I don't Maybe... Edmonton is the best, and Winnipeg behind them, and then Hamilton in that order. Oh, see, I think I, I I'm with you with Edmonton. I think Edmonton right now looks like the better of the zero and three teams. I think I would go. Oh boy, that is a tough one. I think I would go Hamilton then Winnipeg right now. I don't know what it is about. I think Winnipeg. We've talked about this for two weeks now. Winnipeg. We think yeah. they can still turn it around. We just they've had that track record where we they're like the Kansas City Chiefs, like. They'll figure it out. We're not too worried about them. I mean, it looks scary right now, but 
they could probably get it turned around. But man, if if this keeps happening for a couple of weeks for the Blue Bombers, I mean, and, and we'll talk about who they got coming up this week. I mean, this could be a winnable game for them this week. But boy, if they drop this one, I'll be really concerned. Yeah, I said last week, you know, after two losses uh, to start the season, I said that Winnipeg, it, it's, it's not time to, to, you know, start worrying yet. Now that they're 0-3, I'm thinking maybe it is time to start worrying about that team. They, I, I We'll talk I about know. it in a second, but this this game they got this week, if they lose this one, that's when I hit the panic button. Okay. I, I hate to say that, but that's where I'm at right now with the Blue Bombers. Okay. All right, here are the week four matchups. On Thursday, it's going to be the 0-3 Edmonton Elks at the 2-1 BC Lions. On Friday, it's going to be the Montreal Alouettes at 3-0 at the Toronto Argonauts at 2-0. This is your battle of undefeateds this week. Saturday, it's going to be the 0-3 Winnipeg Blue Bombers at the Calgary Stampeders, who are 1-1 right now, coming off a bye. And on Sunday, it's going to be the Hamilton Tiger Cats 0-3 at the Ottawa Red Blacks, who are 1-1, and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders at 3-0 are going to be on bye this week. All right, we, we do have one news story from the CFL. Um, the CFL has fined four kickers for daring to complain publicly about the insertion of microchips into the footballs this year. Uh, this, the CFL fined Winnipeg kicker Sergio Castillo, Saskatchewan kicker Brett Lother, BC kicker Sean White, and Ottawa kicker Lewis Ward last Friday. Castillo complained after Winnipeg's uh, season opening loss against Montreal where he missed two field goals and an extra point in the game. And that's pretty unusual for him. So he's blaming it on the balls. I I don't know. Uh, I, I want to see what these chips look like. You said they were like the size of a grain of sand, but uh, I, no, that's, I don't know. That's what the NFL has got in their balls. I don't okay. know what the CFLs is. If the kickers are complaining about them, there's got to be something bigger than a grain of rice in these footballs. Uh, there's been a few posts I've kind of looked around. And they, they make it sound like the, the USFL had the same problem uh, last year, the year before, when they had stuff in the balls. And mm. the balls would, like, drift a certain direction a little more. Uh, they were, like, lopsided. Like, I don't know if they were lopsided or what with a with a chip or whatever in it. I don't know how big yeah. it is. and But then once they got rid of that ball, the you know, kickers did fine. So I think they're just advocating for don't – the kickers shouldn't have to kick with those balls. But, like, all the other stuff seems fine. Like, throwing it, running it, obviously, with the chip in the balls seemed to be okay. Yeah. But they were just saying, just don't use them for kicks. Just don't use these balls for kicks. And yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, it is a weird issue. When I saw all these kickers getting fined, uh, I didn't realize they were all speaking out like this. So this, this is something yeah. to keep an eye on, I think, for the rest of the year. Yeah. Well, the league came out last week and said that now the teams will have the option if they want to kick with the the chipped balls or the the you know non-chipped balls so they kind of alleviated that but i guess uh these fines are coming from players who complained before they made this move so whatever <laughs> yeah I, it, it it is it's a weird situation you wouldn't you wouldn't think it, that it would it, affect them that much you wouldn't think like i said it just depends i'd have to see what exactly the chip looks like in these balls yeah uh, i'd like to see a picture how, of it too if, if somebody's got a picture yeah, if, of it yeah, Send us it's a out there, right? Yeah. Or if they got a little more information, if we're just missing something, we're just kind of barely scraping the surface there with that. But it's just a fascinating thing to kind of keep an eye on. And I mean, in the few games I've watched, it hasn't seemed like the, it's been that big of an issue. I, I don't so know. I don't know. Like I, maybe they went. I thought, oh, they just went into that game without chips in the ball. Maybe I don't know. Hmm. Clearly, they did something yeah. because before the Argonauts game, we were just at. They said prior to the game that the balls will have the chips in them, so if they end up in the stands, be sure to give them back to, like, oh. a representative of the team and get it back yeah. out on the field. Yeah. So yeah. I was assuming that the Argonauts game, they at least were using them. So I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Well, that's all we've got for this week. Uh, remember, folks, some people may love football more than we do, but nobody, and I mean nobody, loves more football than the two of us guys sitting here in Kalamazoo. Until next time, I'm Randy Snow. And I'm Adam Snow. And we'll see you at the 55-yard line. Oh, was I supposed to say that? I I thought you would. Oh, <laughs>